cancer is a disease which does not need a very long introduction. Everybody unfortunately knows about this disease very well. Two million women are diagnosed yearly breast cancer and 600,000 women approximately die every year as a direct consequence of this disease. Now the numbers are huge. This is very many people which are affected by this disease not only just dying you do it but having consequences physical and psychological derived from having suffered cancer now this is a disease which can be treated we know how to treat patients with breast cancer only we need to find cancer at a very early stage to do so if we are able to find cancer at very early stages 90 percent of women can survive for more than five years after being diagnosed cancer and these are numbers are very huge and very promising and the key for improving our lives in the future and reducing the number of people which die as a consequence of breast cancer is improving the ways in which we can find cancer inside our body. Now, I am no medical doctor. I am a geoscientist. I've been working for many years in getting to know what is inside the earth. So looking at the earth's interior is something which we've been doing for decades. And essentially, it's related to looking at the seismograms produced by earthquakes all around the surface of our planet. And by gathering all this data and using certain algorithms, we are able to infer the properties of the Earth's interior. And this is how we know the structure of our crust, the mantle, and the inner core. Now, these same technologies we realized a few years back, together with Luis and Oscar, which are geoscientists as myself, these technologies can be used also to map the human body. Of course, with some tweaks, with some modifications to the standard algorithm and to the data that we're going to use to identify structures within our bodies. But of course, the main problem was not just adapting the technologies, but thinking about how we scale the problem of imaging one only body, which is the Earth, to imaging as many bodies as patients we want to treat. This problem way very soon we realized is way bigger than us we're going to need strong partners to bring this forward and mature the technology in the future to that purpose we have incorporated front wave imaging together with our partner institutions we are a spin-off of bsc but also of imperial college london and we're having strong partners such as 101 ventures which helps us in everything related to business development now if we look at how we can image uh, our bodies and in particular looking for breast cancer, there are several techniques which are very frequently used and have their own strengths and weaknesses. We can start with mammograms, which is the most well-known technique, which is based upon x-rays, so it does radiate upon our bodies. It has a very small chance of generating cancer as a consequence of that, so we should not repeat them very often, but still they are the most widely used technique for screening. Now we also have MRI which is mm, even better in terms of its resolving capabilities, but it's a very expensive technique. It's very costly to produce these images, hence they have not been deployed, let's say, as uh, frequently or as widely as mammograms for the purposes of screening. Now, whenever we have the idea of or the potential of a certain um, unknown structure, let's say, within our bodies, a tumor, we might want to use ultrasound in order to discern whether this is something malignant or not. Now, these three techniques now, we hope, can be complemented with our approach, which produces images such as the one that you see in here. Very clear pictures of our body's interior and with colors. Now, you might wonder why the colors matter in this case. They do, actually. The reason for using colors here is because they are actually mapping physical properties of the body under uh, scrutiny here. In this case, we are looking at the property velocity of propagation of acoustic waves, which is intrinsic to the tissue. You will see that different tissues have different velocities, and we can use that directly to discern whether we are looking at something which is a benign tumor or cancer, and that is critical in the diagnosis of this disease. 
Now, the process by which we can build those images is fairly simple. We first need a novel machine which acquires ultrasound data in a very unconventional way. We are not building these machines. They already exist and many hospitals are testing them already. And they produce the equivalent of a computerized tomography, but instead of using x-rays, they're using ultrasound. Now this data, which is very comfortable, very safe to acquire, can then be moved into a supercomputing center and we, together with our software we can produce images such as the one that I've been showing you before. Now, the idea of building this technology is something which has been around for about two, three years, together with my colleagues Luis and Oscar, and with time, by evolving the concepts and by convincing other people, we have been able to expand our team to, into a much bigger and more uh, effective, say, team for developing further this technology in the future. Plus, we are looking forward to partner with one well-renowned hospital in the Catalan area, which can help us co-develop this technology with a much, um, let's say, better uh, precision and a clearer comparison with other technologies which already exist. Now, moving to 2023, and our idea is that this technology can be applied as a screening replacement or complement to those already existing now. The key concept, of course, is using supercomputing to reduce the cost of the simulations so that they can be applied massively in the future. But first, we need to establish with the specificity and its capacity to discern properly cancer from other tissues. This is uh, what we will do in the future, but what lies ahead is a novel imaging technique which will be painless for women will not incur in radiating their bodies, will be very high quality, and will be able to physically map the properties of our tissues inside our bodies. Hence, the promise of being able to reduce those dramatic numbers in the future are looking good for us, and we are hoping that our technology can have an impact and help save lives in the near future. So thank you very much. Now you know about Farm Wave Imaging, and let's hope that you can hear more about us very soon.